Hi, in this video, I'll show you how to calculate the advantage of an adversary in the pseudo random function security game. All right, so first, let's recap uh, really quickly what happens in the uh, uh, pseudo random so PRF uh, security game. So as usual, in those kinds of security game, you have uh, a challenger. Okay, so whoops, sorry, challenger. and an adversary, okay? And they will, uh, so they will play a game where uh, there's going to be two experiments. So experiment zero and experiment one, okay? So uh, the adversary uh, always behaves the same, okay? So regardless of the experiment, the adversary um, is going to try in some sense to decide whether or not the challenger is evaluating a pseudo random function or an actual random function. So the adversary produces input x1, xq for a uh, moderate size q, and then sends them to the challenger. Now, let's say we are in experiment zero. Okay, so in experiment zero, what will happen is the challenger will draw a function uniformly at random in the space of functions, uh, let's say, uh, between x and x, where x is the uh, uh, inputs, okay? And then it returns f of x1, the dot f of xq, okay? And then from that, the adversary decides to output either a zero or a one, okay? Now, in experiment one, we're gonna have a similar situation, challenger versus adversary. But in this case, when the adversary sends x1, xq to the challenger, the challenger then the, draws a key uniformly at random in the key space and evaluates the pseudo random function with the key k on x1, xq. Okay, and sends that to the adversary. Okay, so that's experiment one. Now, of course, the adversary does not know what experiment they're playing. So that means that they were seeing a box that outputs uh, uh, values y1, yq, and they cannot know, um, I mean, unless there is a flaw, of course, on the pseudo random uh, function, there is no way for them to decide. Uh, so they output a zero or a one, okay, so and they, they don't know in advance, they're trying to decide only from the look of uh, the outputs. And sorry, by that, I mean, f of x1, f of xq. Okay. Now, uh, then we look at the discrepancy of the behavior of the adversary in those two games in order to calculate the advantage of that adversary. So what that means is we're going to look, whoops, sorry, we're going to look at uh, the event w0, which is defined as the adversary returns zero in experiment zero, okay? And we'll look at w1, which is that defined as the adversary returns zero, but this time in experiment zero, uh, experiment one, sorry. Okay, so, and then the advantage of the adversary is the difference between the probabilities of these two events. Now, what uh, the absolute value, of course, so it, it really doesn't matter uh, if, for example, uh, uh, the adversary returns a, a very, very rarely zero in experiment zero, or very, very often zero in experiment zero, what matters is really the difference between those two values, because this discrepancy really measures uh, uh, that uh, the adversary behaves very differently when presented with uh, evaluations of a truly random function versus evaluations of a pseudo random function. Okay, so uh, we're going to see uh, in the following, we're going to see what uh, what kind of questions I could be asking. Uh, when it comes to uh, uh, pseudo random functions. 
So it has to do a lot with uh, uh, enumeration, okay? So uh, one of the questions that we need to know how to figure out is counting functions from a set to another set, okay? So here, toy example, I'm looking at functions from the set 0, 1, 2 to the set 0, 1, 2. So how many functions uh, between those two sets are they? So uh, intuitively, the way I like to see it is you just enumerate your choices for f of zero, okay? So f of zero, how many choices? Three choices, okay? And then f of one, how many choices do I have? Well, three choices as well, right? It could be zero, one, or two. And then f of two, I also have three choices, okay? Now those choices are all independent, you know, and each of those triplet yields a different function. So the total number of functions is three times three times three equals 27, okay? Now, one way to also visualize it is if you put things in kind of a, a tree. Uh, so you could look at, you know, if f of zero is a zero or if it's a one or if it's a two, and then f of one will yield three more branches in the tree, okay, a zero, one, or two, etc. And then f of two will yield more branches. And you can convince yourself that the number of leaves here of your tree is going to be 27 as well. Okay. But I really like to see it that way, you know, just saying, oh, how many choices for f of zero, of f of one, of f of two, and arguing uh, that these are independent. All right. So now the next kind of question that I might be asking, although it's not directly relevant here, but it's uh, for a lot of the pseudo random function games, we would want to uh, uh, identify a discrepancy that is uh, uh, particular to a bijection. So uh, another kind of question you might be facing is how many bijections do we have? So look at what happens here. F of zero will have also three choices. But then for f to be a bijection, it has to be that f of zero is different than f of one and f of two, which means that by the time you choose f of one, then you have only two choices, okay? And then f of two, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, f of two then has to be different than f of zero and f of one, you only have one choice. And then the number of bijection then is going to be three times two times one equals six. So you see that if a function is a bijection, so if you can identify that, then you only have six choices for a bijection. Okay, so if your pseudo random function is a bijection by design, which it will have to be for the cryptographic applications to block ciphers, then for sure, uh, you're going to have uh, much fewer possibilities. All right. So now, Another kind of question that uh, we may ask is uh, how many functions with a certain property? So for example, here, f of zero being different than f of one. So uh, f of zero, how many choices? I will have three choices. But then f of one, how many choices do I have for f of one? Well, I only have one choice, right? And it's fixed by, fixed by f of zero. And then f of two, I have back and back to having three choices. And the number of such functions is three times one times three, and that's nine, okay? So uh, let's move on to an actual uh, example of a pseudo random function. So let's say my pseudo random function takes a key. So um, uh, let's say uh, it has a key my key is also in zero, one, or two, okay? Okay, so, uh, and then f indexed by k is just, uh, it maps x to x plus k modulo three, okay, very simple. Now, the adversary asks for two values, okay? Again, remember, these are very Tory examples. Uh, could ask for all the values, right? But but let's say the, adver the adversary that I'm giving here is behaving this way. It asks for the value of zero and the value of one and returns zero, those value match. Now, what is the advantage of such an adversary? Okay, so in experiment zero, remember what I have 
is the following. Okay, so I have my challenger and my adversary. And my adversary sends a zero and one to the challenger. The challenger draws a function uniformly at random from the function from say zero one to zero one, and then returns f of zero and f of one. Now, what is the probability here that f of zero equals f of one? So probably of w zero, that's the probability that f of zero equals f of one. So that's the number of, of uh, functions f such that f of zero equals f of one, which we calculated to be nine, divide by the number, the total number of functions, okay? And that we said was 27, okay? So see, this is all about counting. And once we've counted, so nine divided by 27, that is just one out of three. So here goes uh, the calculation of P of W zero. Okay, now I need to calculate what happens to P of W one. So I need to figure out what happens in the experiment. Oops, sorry. In the experiment one. So in the experiment one, my challenger will no longer draw a random function, but instead my challenger is going to draw uh, an ad, uh, my challenger is going to draw an, uh, uh, a key. Okay, so key in zero, one, or two. Okay. My adversary sends zero, one, and then the challenger evaluates FK at zero and FK at one. Okay. So remember, this is basically K mod three per the definition of my, uh, uh, pseudo random function. Okay, and then this is k plus one mod three. Okay, and now it turns out, so the probability of w one, which is the probability that k equals k plus one mod three. Okay, this is basically zero. Okay, because there is no way k equals k plus one mod three. Okay. So, and then we uh, just engineer the pseudo random function that way. So now we have that P of W zero equals one third and P of W one is zero. The advantage is one third minus zero, which is one third. And this is a non negligible advantage. Okay. So we have an efficient adversary that has non negligible, negligible advantage. And the pseudo random function, which means that the pseudo random function that I described is not really a secure pseudo random function. All right. So now you know how to calculate the advantage of a given adversary in the pseudo random function security game. Thank you for listening.